Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to Software Engineering Info Session. I am Tiffany Webb. I am your host uh, for this evening or afternoon, depending on where you are. Um, you could be anywhere. Um, we're really happy that you're spending your valuable time with us. Let me go ahead and share my screen and get this started. Like I said before, this is Software Engineering Info Session. Um, I am Tiffany Webb, the Director of Product Marketing and Events. Um, I've currently been at a Flatiron School for just over three years now. I am based out of Los Angeles, but I am a New York City girl, born and bred. So uh, for my New York City peeps, uh, I miss it out there, but I do not miss the cold. Um, a little bit about myself. I'm an avid cyclist. I, I cycle, uh, you know, on average 40 miles in a clip. Um, I love music. It's the thing that makes me feel whole and I am a TV watcher. So thank you for your television uh, suggestions. I am going to download some for my flight out East uh, for Thanksgiving. Appreciate that. Let's go over our agenda. Uh, we're going to start with a welcome, warm welcome. Welcome to you all. Uh, we'll, we're going to go over our uh, COVID protocols and, and what's going on uh, with our campus experience. Uh, now that we are um, starting to come back to campus for certain locations. Um, we're going to go over our two programs, Live and Flex. Um, then we'll talk about software engineering, uh, the program as a whole, um, like the curriculum and, and what you learn uh, in the program. I'll go through our admissions process so you can understand um, what it takes to, to get into the program followed by our career services, understanding um, what happens once you've graduated. And then I will open up the floor for question and answer. So feel free to add any uh, questions uh, in the chat. Um, I might miss them. So if you'd like, uh, you can also put them in the Q&A function and I will make sure to get around to them. And Steven, I know you had some questions. If you wanna um, just, put that in the Q&A. I'll get around to that towards the end. Um, presentation shouldn't take any more than 25 minutes uh, at most, and then I will open up the floor to you all. To uh, Flatiron School, uh, our motto is we're here to enable the pursuit of a better life through education. And we have been doing that since we were founded in 2012. Um, Adam Embar and Avi Flambaum uh, founded Flatiron School as an alternative education model to provide students with 21st century skills ne uh, needed to succeed in tech. Um, we currently operate on eight campuses in the United States, uh, Austin, Chicago, Denver, Houston, Manhattan, San Fran, Seattle, and DC. Uh, in, I believe, the fall of uh, 2019, we purchased SecureSet, um, which is now our sister school. Uh, and they have campuses in both Denver and Colorado Springs, but uh, the Colorado Springs location only offers our cybersecurity program. Speaking about programs, we currently offer four life-changing and career-changing courses, software engineering, which we're gonna talk a little bit more about today, uh, data science, cybersecurity, and product design. Um, and we offer all four of those with flexible pacing options. So we'll get we'll get more around to those pacing options and, and uh, a brief description of those other programs. And uh, one of the best parts about Flatiron School is our proven job search framework. Um, it's helped thousands of, of our Flatiron School grads land fulfilling jobs in tech. And I believe uh, at the end of the summer, we, we um, placed our 5,000th a grad in, in a job in tech. So really proud of those stats. And every day, um, those numbers are going up as co cohorts um, graduate. Sorry, my mouse is a little wild today. So let's just quickly go over COVID-19 and the campus experience. Um, you know, community is at the heart of everything that we do in Flatiron School. And so we're really, really um, excited to share that we've started to open uh, back some of our campuses. Um, right now, we 
we have Chicago, Denver, Colorado Springs, and New York City open for um, events and uh, studying and meeting cohort mates. Um, New York City just piloted our first uh, on-campus cohort in almost two years um, in October. And in January, um, both New York City and Denver will be offering software engineering and data science um, back on campus. And there'll be a slow rollout to other campuses as we um, you know, get that process uh, buttoned up. But if you want to learn more about you know, what we are doing for those campus experiences, you can always go to flyerinschool.com backslash campus dash experience to get more information. Oh my goodness, I gotta not touch the mouse. That's what I'm gonna do. So all of our courses, off, we offer both in live and flex versions. And what does that mean? Uh, our live cohort is 15 weeks uh, and we offer that nine to six every day, um, Monday through Friday for 15 weeks straight. Um, and, uh, and that's in the cities, uh, sorry, and that's in all cities. Um, and the in-person cities will be New York City and Denver, and that will be nine to six in person for 15 straight weeks. It's very limited um, uh, flexibility in that. It's very intensive. It's 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 four months of, of just working hard um, every day. Uh, it's very hard to hope, have a job during that time. Um, but we do offer flexible options uh, for all of our programs, and those come in the form of 20, 40, or 60 week flexible um, work time for you. So if you need to have a job, or you are a primary caregiver for children or elderly folks, or you just do better at uh, working late at night, um, this is where the flex option uh, would come into play. The live and flex uh, options both offer the same curriculum. It just has a different uh, time frame for when it's expected for you to graduate. For the flex, you can start. Let's say you you go. I'm going to work with your your uh, partner in in uh, Flatiron School, and you're going to say, I think I could do this in 20 weeks and a flexible schedule. After looking at the syllabus and after talking to admissions and understanding like what works best for you. Uh, you start the 20 week program and a life event happens or you're not able to keep up with the certain milestones that you need um, to complete in 20 weeks. You can always change your pace to 40 or 60 weeks to accommodate um, to accommodate whatever your needs are. So um, it's, it's truly a flexible option and uh, a lot of people uh, like that uh, as opposed to the 15 weeks. But a lot of people, some people really love um, just going 15 weeks straight, uh, getting it done and, and already looking for a career uh, by week 16 or 17. All right, so I wanted to give a typical day in the life of our live programs. And uh, if you look here, you can see it's broken out a little bit different for software engineering, data science, and product design than it is for cybersecurity. Um, I know that we're not going over cybersecurity, but I did want to showcase uh, what that, um, that uh, program looks like. So if you're doing the 15 week nine to six program, you will have 9 a.m. Uh, perhaps a, a student-led discussion, followed by lecture, uh, then a lunch break at noon. Um, around one, you'll, you'll work uh, in pairs and do some pair programming. And 4 p.m., you'll have some labs and mini projects to complete. And then 6 p.m. until whenever you finish, you'll have some, some take-home work. Um, cybersecurity is a little bit different. We, we kind of call that one a more of a 50-50 split. Um, so you'll have 50% of your times in lecture, 50% of your times doing labs, um, followed by uh, study time in the evening. And the reason we don't have a flex uh, day in the life here is because flexible is how you uh, want to learn. So if you, you know, have a part-time job and you work, you know, nine to noon, when you come home, you choose the pacing of how you will work uh, through the program and the curriculum and what milestones you'll hit in that day or week. Um, so there, there's no real prescriptive um, uh, day in the life for that um, course. 
or for that pace, excuse me. So let's get down to software engineering. What is software engineering, right? Um, software engineering is the design, development, maintenance, testing, and evaluation of websites and computer software. So in short, coding sites that people use every day. Um, I always love to say that if you go to Google, you need a software engineer to build it. If you go to um, your local city hall website, you need a software engineer to build that. So it's just coding the websites that we use and apps that we use every day. Instagram has coders. Um, the metaverse has coders. Um, and that, that's what a software engineering uh, is. Um, our software engineering grads land jobs as software engineers and software developers, um, sometimes junior, sometimes um, uh, regular level, sometimes senior, depending on what they apply for in uh, their job search. So what will you learn in our in Flatiron School software engineering program? Um, obviously, you'll learn the fundamentals. Uh, programming languages for web development are uh, JavaScript, HTML, CSS, Ruby. You'll learn some object-oriented uh, programming and some data modeling. So you'll learn SQL, object relational mappers. Um, you'll definitely touch upon front end, which is we, we teach React and Redux, and you will touch across um, the back end, which is Rack, Sinatra, and Ruby on Rails. Um, and that's uh, what we would call um, uh, the full scope. Uh, you're getting the full stack of, of software, engi um, software engineering. You're not just getting front end or back end. You're learning a little bit of both so that you can maneuver uh, in any uh, coding job. So what do what does it look like to go through the phases in Flatiron School? Um, currently, we have five phases. Um, and there's a phase zero up here. And that's just because when you're when you join the program, there'll be a little bit of pre-work that you'll need to do um, to be ready for day one. Uh, and that's what we are uh, you know, calling here phase zero. It's a, a JavaScript base pre-work, which focuses on HTML and CSS and the basics there. Uh, and then phase one, you'll dig more into JavaScript, followed by phase two, uh, which you'll dive into React. Uh, and, and the first two phases are definitely, our first phase, two phases in pre-work are all front end. And then you'll learn Ruby and stack on Rails on top of that. And then phase five is your full stack uh, final project where you will create a fully functional um, uh, app a web application uh, and showcase your work um, and what you've learned. Uh, super awesome. This is an example of, uh, of a, not the uh, phase five project, but at the end of each phase, you'll you know have some work to show. Um, we had Adam and Tali build uh, together uh, Words with Nerds. If you've ever played Words with Friends, this is definitely a play off of that, but it was a fully functioning application where uh, you would able you were able to look at your stats and there are rules and you can have a leaderboard. Um, you or it, you you log in, you log out, um, and it was a fully functioning uh, words with nerds game, which was pretty cool to watch. Um, all right, on to our admissions process. How do you secure your spot in a class in an upcoming cohort? First things first, you got to submit an application. So if you go to flatironschool.com, uh, uh, flat you can see a big yellow uh, thing that says apply now. Apply, uh, write your application. Uh, that will prompt you to get into an admissions interview uh, where you'll talk with one of our admissions leads about the program, about uh, why you're interested in joining Flatiron School and, and what you're interested in doing uh, in your career, uh, followed by an admissions assessment. Um, it is not uh, coding based by any means. It's more of an assessment of, of how um, you can uh, deduce uh, skills. Think like pre-PSATs. I'll make sure that you get um, uh, a link to our uh, emissions assessment blog that, that breaks it down, but it's not technical in any nature. Um, it's just more of understanding like how you logically solve problems. After that, you'll get an admissions decision. Uh, you're in, that's awesome, you're admitted. Uh, after you get admitted, you will choose a financing option. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in, in a minute. Um, once you do that and, and start your, you'll start your pre-work uh, where you'll 
get up to speed. And a lot of people ask like, why pre-work? Why do we need to have uh, any pre-work if, if experience is not needed in this program or I have some knowledge? And, and how I answer that is pre-work is to level set everyone so that on day one, everyone has the same amount of knowledge. Um, and then um, once you get through, uh, that is about, I don't know, 30 to 40 hours of pre-work. Um, you'll sign your enrollment agreement and then you'll start day one. Uh, and day 14 is, is highlighted here because uh, that's when we send out a survey asking how your initial first two weeks um, have gone and we'll set the benchmark on what needs to be adjusted or fixed or um, what we should keep doing uh, that was great for you. So back to the application part, I get this question a lot, when should I apply? Um, and I think it's important to understand that your application is just the first step. Um, I think uh, that, uh, you know, you should do it when you are ready for a career change, when you're ready to kind of change your life. Um, and when you have the time when you are ready to commit to either the live or flex pace. And this is super important here because um, this program is not easy. It's not so difficult that you can't do it, but it takes time and commitment. And, and it really um, is something that has some rigor uh, behind it. So you, you need to have the time to, to be able to do it. Um, but what you don't know, need to know is you don't need to know how to code. Uh, if you're looking at other disciplines, you don't need to know how to hack or design or, or have worked with data science before. And you don't need to know exactly how you're going to pay for the course. Um, that's what our admissions team is here for, and they can help you to understand um, if there's any scholarships that might work for you or um, if there's any other financing options that may work for you uh, to, to help you get through uh, this program financially. There's a little pro tip though, if you if you want, if you're interested in joining and, and you're not sure if coding is really for you, we do have on our website some uh, free coding lessons. Uh, there's HTML and CSS, there's JavaScript, there's Ruby, and there's API integrations. And this will, one, give you a little taste uh, of what it's like to code, but two, give your application a little leg up um, if you've already started them, because it'll show our admissions team that you, you do have interest. And if, if you do um, join any of those, um, it'll record into um, your profile and we will know that you've been starting them. So how do you do this? If you go to uh, flatironschool.com and you click on the courses tab uh, and go down to free lessons, uh, you can go to intro to coding and all of those lessons that I mentioned before are there. Plus an, a new one that just uh, popped up, uh, it's called uh, Career Prep Lite, uh, where you can kind of see what our career services course um, offers in terms of, uh, not course, excuse me, our career services portion of, of this process offers um, offers to our students. Uh, it's it's kind of, it, we call it a little, it's career prep light because uh, we don't want to give away all of the information, but we definitely give you a, a, a really nice window into what that process will look like. And then back to like what our admissions team is looking for in an application. The first one is passion. Uh, we want you to be yourself. We want you to ask questions. We want you to show up and show up on time um, and, and, and show that you're really uh, into um, this new and next step in your life. Um, aptitude, not aptitude in, in actual coding, but like aptitude in, in your skill set, in your potential and your commitment, um, once again, because of that rigor to this process process and, and, and the progress, uh, progression through, um, you know, the process. Um, and you have a desire to learn. Um, the, one of the biggest things that we, we do here is we teach people how to learn. Um, coding is like learning a new language um, and you need to practice it, but also like certain languages, like let's say the romance languages, if you learn Spanish, you might be able to speak Italian a little bit better, right? So if you learn React, as new languages and programming are coming up every day, you'll learn the skills you'll need uh, to help yourself learn those new languages. Um, and so that's obviously um, learning, uh, loving to learn is, is super important here at Flatiron School. And if 
if your values align with our company's values, right? And we have make no little plans, be scrappy, pursue mastery, work together, radiate positivity and nurture difference. Um, those are literally uh, a part of Flatiron School and, and we in, uh, interject that into everything that we do, including our curriculum and our, and our time with our community. All right, over, sorry about the helicopter, LA filled with filled with the uh, helicopters that never had anything like this in my life. Um, over to tuition and financing. We have a few options. Um, you could pay up front, uh, which is everyone makes an initial $500 deposit um, when they want to commit to this program. But then you could pay a lump sum of the balance. Um, and our tuition is $16,900. So we know that not a lot of people have have the opportunity to put down, you know, 16,400 bucks, but we also have the option to pay in installments. So you make the initial $500 deposit and then you pay your tuition balance over a 12 month installation um, installment plan. Uh, and there are, there's no interest there. You would need to talk a little bit more with the admissions team on, on how that works um, intricately. Um, you know, there definitely are uh, barriers, uh, not barriers, I don't think that's the right word, but there are uh, thing, things that you have to hit in order to, to make that a uh, possibility, but it is available to, to our students. Um, we also offer student loan partners. Uh, I think right now we have uh, Ascent and Climb are, are two of our partners that uh, we work with. But also, if you have your own bank, you are you may qualify for a um, loan with your own bank. And then, uh, like I said before, there are definitely scholarship and diversity initi uh, initiatives that you can find on our website. Um, and with all of these options, I would discuss them with your admissions uh, rep um, and during your admissions interview because they can definitely point you in the right direction for what might work for what you need um, in, in your uh, payment uh, process. Um, career coaching. We talked a little bit about this uh, with that new career, career prep light. Um, uh, lesson that we have on our site, but um, a big part of our career coaching is to get you hired, right? Uh, and we have a proven job search framework that does that. It's, uh, first of all, it starts with dedicated one-to-one -one career coach. Um, it's not going to be you and eight to a hundred other people working with one coach at the same time. You, John Smith, will be working with one coach on your individual plan. And I think that is what sets us apart from a lot of our competitors. Um, and we also go into both technical and behavioral interview training. So we teach you how to, um, you know, write your cover letter. We help you with your resume. We help you with your LinkedIn. We give you all of the, the tips and tricks on how to uh, network uh, in order to um, get in the door, but then we help you with those interviews that, that you're going to go through um, for coding. There's more than likely going to be a technical portion of your interview, um, as well as, you know, the cultural or behavioral interview. Uh, and we do mock interviewing as well. Um, we help you figure out how to research and, and, and actually look for jobs that are within your realm. Um, and we definitely have a professional networking support system. Uh, we've hired over 5,000, gotten over 5,000 students um, graduated. So we have uh, partners that we work with. We have an entire employer partnerships team um, that have been able to help people get jobs in places like Spotify, Etsy, Apple, Infosys. Um, and I know Infosys and a, and a few other companies have been hiring multiple of our grads. Um, and so that's been super great. But these, obviously these are huge uh, companies and, and we love to tout these, but I think some of the biggest stars here um, are, that aren't here are, are smaller companies, the startups that have begun. Um, for data science, we get a lot of people into a company called Datadog, um, which is just awesome, right? It's a small growing startup. Uh, company like we used to be. And, um, and we've seen people go on and do some great things in their career um, and start their own companies even. All right, so I'm going to come off, uh, I'm going to stop share and I'm going to open it up for questions. I 
saw first Stephen uh, ask the question about tuition finance, um, and I think we touched a lot about around that. Um, tuition is sixteen thousand nine hundred dollars for all four of our programs. Uh, we have the four financing options: you can pay upfront, you can pay in installments, you can pay through your own personal loan provider or a loan provider that we have, and we have uh, scholarships that um, are for. Um, available to all of our students and we have diversity initiatives. So that's a, a big portion of, of your question, Stephen. Um, deferred payment, we don't uh, currently offer an ISA um, uh, in our programs anymore. Um, I know some of our competitors do it, but there's been a lot of um, information that have come up about ISAs and we really wanted to have some of the best options for our students. So definitely do some research on, on those um, as you are, are looking into programs. Um, I got a question in the Q&A. What is the average entry level salary for your graduates? That is a great question. Um, I'm actually going to put in the chat, give me two seconds. I did not have my um, links up, which I normally do. Um, let me get the jobs report link. Here is a link to our jobs report. Uh, put it in the chat for everyone. I believe, let me just open it and I could tell you um, the average US starting salary for all of our programs. So it's very, um, I think this is software engineering, data science, and perhaps one other discipline. Um, it has to be over 12 months worth of, of aggregate data is around 75,000, but that also uh, is average across the United States. So obviously New York City, LA, San Francisco have higher salaries. Um, smaller cities um, usually have smaller salaries. So it's, it's meeting in the middle. Um, we have information on our site um, that will show, uh, what is this? New York City software engineer average made 77 as opposed to 75, which is like entry level software engineering roles across the United States. So definitely look at that uh, link that I put in the chat and I'll make sure to add that to the follow-up email so that you can um, you know, check uh, our placement rates and look at our average starting salaries um, as well. Uh, all right, so I answered that live. Is it too late to apply for scholarships for November cohort? I know it says there's no deadline on the website. Um, I don't believe that it's too late, but this is a conversation that you, if you already applied for um, a cohort in November and you're already in that process, I would definitely bring that up with your admissions rep. Um, I don't wanna say uh, yes or no, because I don't know what, what that process looks like. Usually there's a, there's a process for applying. Uh, sometimes it has to go through a review board and so on and so forth. So I don't know if that'll work for this November cohort. If you're trying to get into the November cohort, which I think starts, oh man, you guys are testing all my knowledge today, which I love. I love it because I should have all the answers for you. Our November cohort uh, starts on Monday. So I would definitely um, double check if you're already in the process with your admissions rep. Um, if you're trying to start on Monday, uh, I will tell you right now that that is not a possibility because uh, and, and you aren't in the process already, it's definitely not uh, uh, an available for you at this point because we need about three weeks um, to get you into the pre-work, pre-week, uh, sorry, oh my goodness, pre-work portion of, of uh, the, the process. And so I don't even think you would be ready for the December 13th um, uh, uh, cohort probably the next cohort start date is January 10th for software engineering. Um, all right, so let me see, I answered that live. I saw one in the chat. Um, how selective would you say the admission process is? Um, great question. Um, I think that our admissions process is competitive, but it's not, um, it's not a, a, a crazy hurdle to get in, um, but you do have to go through the process. You have to apply. You have to get through the admission assessment. You have to go through uh, an admissions interview. Um, so if that seems a little daunting, um, the, the process in itself, I think, uh, I think 
you know, maybe take your time, but it's, it's not impossible. We get people in our, in through the doors every day that kind of get through that process and, and make it to the end. So um, I think the first step is a app, uh, going to and filling out your application um, and talking with an admissions rep and understanding what the process entails, what the, what the um, course entails and, and the amount of rigor and time that that takes. Um, I think that would be your first step. Uh, I wouldn't focus on like the barriers of getting in, I think um, getting the process started is always uh, the most important first step. All right, in the q and I see, are the live paced classes available fully online as I do not live near a flat iron campus? Great question, Jane. Yes, um, they are. Uh, we offer what we call uh, East and uh, Central cohorts. And we offer our West and Mountains cohorts for people who live outside of those eight cities that I mentioned in the beginning of, of this uh, um, session. So you can definitely apply to live and that's still 15 weeks, nine to six, uh, and it's online uh, entirely, but it, it is still every day, all day uh, and 15 weeks long. All right. Do you find that most applicants are changing careers or maybe in their mid-20s or have you seen high school grads apply as well? It's a great question. We have seen it run the gamut. Uh, you have to have uh, you have to be 18 years old um, to apply to our program, but I've seen everyone from 18 years old right out of high school to no word of a lie in their 60s applying because they are really into tech and really want to. Um, career changers are a big portion of our applicants and it's people who have started their careers and maybe they're in retail or in acting and, and they're realizing that they don't know if that's really for them anymore and they want to try something different. We see a lot of that. We see a lot of people in their mid-20s, as you identified here, um, join as well. Um, and those are people who are just starting their careers and they're like, eh, I don't I don't know if this is for me. I, I really want to do something else. I want to make more money. I want a better uh, career path in front of me. Um, and I think that is uh, super awesome. I'm going to pull up uh, a quick blog that we um, just released um, for folks who are trying to understand if, uh, you know, what is it, is it too late to become a programmer? Is it, um, I hit the wrong button. Is it too late to become a programmer? Uh, I, I I say it's never too late to learn something new, but you uh, can read that blog here. All right, next question. How long does the admissions process usually take? Great, great question. Um, if you put in your application, let's say today, an admissions rep uh, should probably uh, reach out to you within a day or two uh, to schedule your interview. And that would be at your best you know, uh, convenience. It is a holiday time, but I'm going to do kind of an aggregate. So if, if, if Thanksgiving wasn't next week, let's say they reach out to you um, by Friday or Monday, you could schedule your interview for that week. Then you would take the admissions assessment. So I would add like another day for you to take the assessment for the assessment uh, information to get back over to admissions. It'll take another couple of days for them to kind of give you uh, a decision. And then uh, the, the process of getting you to um, sign your enrollment agreement and your pre-work, um, maybe the whole process, like from application to day one might take anywhere from three to five weeks. Um, if, if, if I'm giving you kind of a roundabout uh, time, it's hard to depict that right now because we've got the Thanksgiving holiday and then we have, um, you know, the holiday season coming up in December. So it might be a little bit longer. You might be able to use some of that holiday time to get through the pre-work um, and start for uh, January. All right, next question. How does pair programming work on a flex schedule? Um, is that something that is still a part of the curriculum? Great question. Um, pair programming works um, in the live program a little bit easier because you're with your cohort mates all the time, uh, a little less so for flex, but uh, I think there are opportunities to learn to pair with other flex students. Um, and, and we do that like through Slack and we have like community channels. We have, if you live near one of our eight locations, you could always come on campus and, and pair program in that way. Um, there's more information in our syllabus and I would 
download that. Let me get you the link to our curriculum and put that in the chat. Um, but I would say uh, you can always contact our admissions reps um, and get uh, some information from, from them on that as well. For Flex Schedule, are there still live classes? Um, great question. Our Flex students typically um, have access to recorded lecture. There's lecture every day and those are recorded and put into our system. And so you have access to that. Um, as far as the live classes go, um, I think because of the, the nature of Flex, there are less opportunities for live classes, but I believe you might have the ability to hop into a live class, um, but I'm not 100% sure and I don't wanna give you false information. You can always uh, reach out for a quick 10 minute chat with our, um, our admissions reps. Uh, and this is software engineering specific, so they will be able to give you all the information uh, that you need there. And it's free and it's booked based on your time. Uh, if you click on that link, it takes you to a calendar where all of our reps are open for, for those 10 minute chats. I'm just gonna take a sip of water. You guys are great. You're asking so many uh, questions, I love it. All right, next question in the Q&A. What do those admitted to the program do to enhance their applications? Would you recommend including a letter of recommendation from a leader already working in the industry? Um, if you're already admitted into the program, your application, you've gone through the whole process. You don't need uh, any references or recommendations to get through the program, um, to get into the program. Uh, that being said, I think if you do have any recommendations, it's something that you can talk uh, with your admissions rep uh, once you apply to the program and you're assigned a rep. Um, but you don't, you don't necessarily need that. It's, it's a good to have. Um, but if you've already been admitted, you're already in the program. We're just now going to work with you to get you to day one uh, to be matriculated in the program and start the program. Um, do applicants have to apply to a particular cohort or once accepted, is there flexibility in determining your uh, which cohort you would like to start with? Great, great question. Um, if you go to the application, which is right here, uh, whoops, uh, you'll see that like uh, the application. Of course, the uh, the link did not show up. Let me do that one more time. Um, I don't know why that's not working. Hold on, let me get you the actual link because you guys are not able to copy. Um, let's see, did that work? Yes, okay. So if you go in, uh, actually I will, okay. So if you go into it, the first page will just kind of ask you some basic information like what's your zip code? Where do you live? Are you in the United States? First name, last name, email. If you go to the next page, it'll say, I'm looking to start uh, in one month, uh, one to three months, three to six months, over six months. So you don't actually pick your cohort start date um, as you're applying. It's a little bit more flexible than that. It's just more of like getting a sense um, from the admissions reps point of view. Um, is this person looking to start in the very next cohort, which is like probably in a month, or do they, you know, are you like saving money or working towards like changing your career or changing your life in like three months so that we can kind of like gauge like, okay, what cohorts will be available for you at that time? Um, if I wanted to start next fall, when would you recommend I start the application process? Honestly, I think if you wanna start next fall, even getting your application in now will start you in the process of talking with the admissions and they can help you go like, all right, they wanna start in uh, September of 2022, which sounds so weird. Can't believe we're already at 2022. Um, and so, Maybe they'll give you like say, hey, attend these workshops that we have coming up so that you can get some hands on experience, go through those free um, lessons that I talked about a little bit ago, um, so that you can at least start getting into it to see if this is something that you want to do. Um, and maybe they can help you with your process uh, a little bit um, further out uh, if, if you want to do that. If you want to wait a little bit of time 
to apply to get all that started. I would say for something, if you're starting in the fall, probably getting your process started next summer uh, at the latest. So that gives you time to work through that pre-work, to get through some hands-on experience, to join some free workshops that we offer, um, and just to see if it's really something that you want to do. And, and you can also like work on like figuring out your financing during that time. It really gives you time so you're not like feeling pressure to do everything like super fast. You can take your time with it. But um, honestly, I would say throw an application in today. But if you if you want to wait on that um, and, and you have some other life stuff going on, I would highly suggest uh, starting in the, in the summer, maybe around June. Um, it gives you three months to sort of like work through that process in, in a slower pace than, it, than uh, kind of uh, working through it in such a truncated pace. Like you start in August and then everything is due like on these due dates, like uh, in order to get you in a September cohort. Um, all right, next question. Are there any live classes for the flex option? I think I answered that uh, already. It's it. They're mostly recorded uh, lectures and you work through it at your own pace. Like, let's say, you, you know, you are working in the morning and you want to start in the afternoon. Can I guarantee that like the lecture that you absolutely need is going to be available at that time? So um, that's something you can talk more about in the, uh, the missions uh, process. Are you able to drop the data science for uh, the syllabus for data science? Let me, um, I can give you the link to our data science page and there's a syllabus download there. I don't have the, um, I'm sorry, I don't have that uh, uh, set up. Uh, let me, here we go. Um, and it depends on like the pace you want and all of that. So if you, if you go to this link, um, on the bottom of this grid, it'll say, well, uh, no, that's not so right. Hold on. Sorry. I will get you the syllabus uh, section. Here we go. So if you if you go to, let's see, let's see, curriculum. All right. So, all right, go here to the curriculum. And at the bottom of like where it says like phase one data analysis, the, there's a link right there to download the syllabus and it'll be sent to you. I just don't have that link um, just uh, up and ready on my notes. All right, are you able to schedule offers hours or additional help if struggling with material? These are such great questions, guys I'm, uh, and, and women and all of the, the above, uh, whatever your pronouns may be. I, I think this is so important. Yes, we have uh, office hours uh, every day of the week, including Saturday. I believe Sunday we might be off, but uh, uh, we could double check on that. Um, but if you're struggling with the material, we definitely offer office hours. If you're like working on your, your let's say you're in the, uh, you're doing some after hours work, it's uh, 10 p.m. On a, on a Wednesday and you're stuck. We actually have people who are there, what we call technical coaches, who are available between uh, certain hours of the day, I think up to midnight every night, that can help you walk through um, some problems that you're going through. So you're never, we're never going to like leave you hanging. There's definitely help along the way. We have people who are there for office hours. Um, during the day, in the evening, um, to help you uh, if you're if you're stuck, um, if you, if anyone's already started coding, if you have a semicolon that you can't find, they will look at the code with you and help you uh, get through that as well. How long does a pre-course work usually take to complete? Great question. Uh, for software engineering, it's about thirty to forty hours. Um, we usually uh, a lot, uh, maybe two to three weeks uh, in the admissions process for you to get through that. Um, and you could do it, at, you know, like in the evening, on the weekends. Um, there's a there's milestones that need to be hit in order to to start on day one. But it's about thirty to forty hours of of pre work. Uh, how many students are usually in one cohort? Um, that's a great question for the live cohorts. Um, we're, you know, you're looking at anywhere between, you know, 
20 and perhaps 40 students. Um, but lectures are always really, um, if you're on campus, if it's in person, it's about 20 students per uh, one major instructor, uh, one, uh, you know, person. Um, and then if you're online, it might be a little bit larger, but then there are breakouts of smaller uh, group things that would be your cohort. So lecture will always be pretty large. We will have one lead lecturer discussing to a larger group of people. And then after lecture, you'll have um, someone who is there to, who's there throughout your entire program um, to kind of break down those larger concepts that are taught in, in, in the lecture. Uh, do you need to be 18 to apply? Yes, you do need to be 18 to apply. But there is no a top age limit. We do definitely just need 18 and over. Do you recommend any specific laptop or uh, laptop program applications? Um, right now, we used to only be Mac, but we are now more compatible for people who do have Windows and Linux. Um, just know that our instructors are uh, Mac users, and so they'll be able to troubleshoot a little bit better with Mac. But outside of that, um, you know, there's no, there's no uh, uh, the laptop specifications. There are like you need to have this much. Yeah, I, I don't know the actual like Mac. Um, I might have a link for a laptop. Here we go. Um, there is a um, like a certain limit you need for Mac. You know, like it can only be so old, but uh, it shouldn't be um, too out of the frame if you, if you don't want to get a new laptop, but we don't have any, like you can use laptop, uh, Mac or Windows uh, in our program. Do you have campus access for flex classes? Yes, uh, if you are, um, if you are currently uh, near, located near any of our open campuses, you should be able to join. Sorry, I'm looking for the campus experience page. Um, you should be able to go uh, into that cohort. You do have to follow, uh, of course, the link is not hyperlinking. Sorry about that. Um, you should be able to go in. We do have COVID protocols uh, on all of our campuses that are uh, that are open. So right now we have Chicago, Denver, New York, and um Austin are, and Colorado Springs are the ones that are open, um, but we do have um, health and safety guidelines, uh, vaccination cards, mask wearing, hand sanitizer, and so, so, far, so on and so forth that are outlined on, on that page that I just dropped in the um, chat. How long do you provide career services for after graduation? Another great question. You guys are out here killing it. Um, so career services is 180 days or six months after you choose your job search framework. So it's not after graduation, right? So like, let's say I graduate on Friday, uh, which we do have a group of students graduating this Friday. Um, you are not, you don't start your career services until you declare your job search date. So you might want to take like a week or two off, maybe a month, and then you say, I am going to, on December 16th, I am going to uh, start my job search. And then you have career services, uh, dedicated career services for six months or up until you get a job. Um, but you still have to, um, you know, do a lot of the work in like looking for companies and getting your resume ready and getting your LinkedIn updated and and networking and attending, um, you know, virtual conferences or in-person conferences if they're around or job fairs. Um, you can find out more about our career services at that link. And I'll definitely make sure to drop a, a, a link in uh, the follow-up email, but you get 180 days of dedicated one-to-one -one, uh, career uh, coaching. All right, um, how long do you provide? Okay, yes, that's what you just asked. So 180 days, six months um, after, after you declare your job search day. Uh, any other questions? We just went through a marathon amount of questions, which I, I love. I think um, we went through 19 questions, guys. I'm, I'm really excited about that. Um, sometimes we get a really quiet group and other times we get 
people who ask all the questions. If there aren't any more questions, um, I will send this recording out to y'all um, within 48 uh, business hours. So like, please, you know, uh, give us a little time. We get these uh, listed up on our YouTube channel and um, you can find a lot of, uh, actually a lot of our Flatiron um, workshops that we've run in the past uh, on, on our channel and you can also um here we go um that's where we will put this but i will also be sending it to uh you all in a follow-up email um with once that link is available if you if there aren't any more questions i want to thank you all for spending the last hour of your wednesday with uh my myself and uh, uh our team here and um, we're really excited and hope to see some of you in our in our classes, but both virtually or in person. Um, if you have any questions, you can always email me. My email will be in uh, the email address, but I'll also make sure to put the admissions uh, link in there as well so that you can uh, talk to an admissions rep directly that they might have some answers that are a little bit more streamlined than uh, than for me, but if you send something to me, I will make sure to get your questions or you over to the right person. Um, thanks again. Uh, have a great evening. And um, I hope to see y'all at some of our workshops we have. If you're interested, we'll have on December 7th, an intro to HTML and CSS uh, workshop with no experience. Uh, you don't need any coding experience uh, to join that. So I will make sure that that link is also uh, included in the follow-up email. Thank you all and, and have a great evening and, uh, and week ahead and happy early Thanksgiving. Um, I hope you all uh, enjoy a, a lovely meal with your uh, friends and loved ones and family. Cheers.